Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I think uh, if, if we, let's say, discussed babies uh, just a few seconds ago, we're now entering a completely different part of life uh, and, uh, let's say, diseases that uh, are, can be lethal. So Kant Kantaria is working both on cancer and autoimmune diseases, and we are working very much uh, around one molecular target called IL-1 RAP, and I will come back to all that. But to, let's say, introduce what we're trying to do in the cancer field is that uh, <clears throat> regardless of how much progress we've made with Im immune therapy lately, uh, most cancer patients will get chemotherapy at one point or another. And uh, chemotherapy is, as you know, it's very, very good because it uh, can kill cancer cells. But cancer cells, uh, let's say, they, they try to defend themselves as well. And, and one way of defending themselves is to upregulate what's called the interleukin-1 system. And there are two forms of interleukin-1, which is very, very important to, to recognize. So they are upregulated and they will counteract the effects of the chemotherapy. So if you look to the left, or if you start above, you have a patient being diagnosed with a cancer. You start treating with chemotherapy, obviously the tumor is responding. And then if you look at the left side, if you continue with chemotherapy, it's no longer working. The tumor starts growing again and it's spreading. And our, our plan is to combine uh, with an antibody treatment then, which is blocking the interleukin-1 system and both forms, both alpha and beta, so that chemotherapy and the antibody can work in synergy and continue to decrease uh, tumor size, as well as stopping the spread. <coughs> and we have clinical data really supporting that hypothesis. So if you look to the right, you can see the data we have in all patients with pancreatic cancer that we have treated so far. So each bar represents one patient, and you can see have a tumor grown when we combine with chemotherapy or has it been decreasing? Uh, and what you would like to see is obviously lots of patients on this right side here. Uh, and we, we definitely observe that most patients are here and it's much, much more patients here uh, than you would expect from chemotherapy alone. And consequently, much less patients up here which are not really benefiting from the therapy than you would expect from chemotherapy alone. So a very clear signal, and that's what we're building on in, in the company now to take it into late stage development. So <clears throat> the pipeline then is that we have uh, done most in first line uh, pancreatic cancer, and we're now going into a potential registration trial, a phase two slash three trial, which will be done in the US. Uh, we have also explored the concept of, let's say, improving chemotherapy in large number of diseases uh, and large number of chemotherapy combinations, and there is much more data to come around that. But besides pancreatic cancer, we are also advancing in non-small cell lung cancer, and we have a, a trial in Spain to, uh, with, with uh, HECAM, who, who is, let's say, the Spanish breast cancer group in triple negative breast cancer, which is very soon finished in the safety phase and will continue onwards to, to a randomized phase during Q1 next year, if everything goes as it should. So lots of things cooking and lots of interesting data to come. Uh, we also have a second product which is entering clinical trials uh, next year. Uh, it's another antibody against the same molecular target, but it's been designed for autoimmune inflammatory diseases and myocarditis, systemic sclerosis, which are both potentially uh, lethal diseases. Uh, so, <clears throat> to, to, to give more perspective of what's happening, so this is a preclinical model uh, where we are investigating. Uh, so we have mice with tumors, and we treat with uh, one chemotherapy called docetaxel. And uh, if we combine uh, with an antibody against one of the forms of interleukin. So there are two forms of interleukin-1 beta, but there is one of the forms called uh, anti-IL-1 beta. And if you only block that form, uh, you do, will not get a synergy. And this is important because this type of combination has been tested clinically and not shown uh, any efficacy. So basically we mimic that result here. 
But if you block both forms like we do, there is a synergistic effect in these animal models. So that really explains why we see good effects in, in patients as well. And it, we also see that the chemotherapy increase IL-1 alpha in the tumor, which is basically what we would expect. And that's why IL-1 beta blockade does not work. So then look, looking into what, what have you seen in lung cancer then, and when we we'll go to pancreatic cancer. But in lung cancer, we do... So here, here we're taking patients that have... Uh, some of them have received immune therapy, some have not. But we do see that we have a very good response rate in these patients when we combine with chemotherapy. So it's about twice as high as you expect from chemo alone. Uh, so more than 50% versus somewhere 25%. Uh, we also see that one of the subgroups called non-squamous non-small cell lung cancer is the one really driving the signal. So here we see higher response rates, especially if you compare to controls. Uh, and you see a much durable response, which is what you really hope for. If a chemotherapy is, let's say, in stop working, you will not get a durable response. Here we are almost up to one year's response durability. So again, a very good result, uh, which is followed by good progression-free survival. And obviously, we expect to see good survival data as well. But when we presented these data, most patients were still alive and uh, lots of them on treatment. So more to come uh, uh, next year. Uh, in pancreatic cancer, uh, as I said, uh, th this is a result where we see how, how many patients are actually getting tumor shrinkage. Uh, but this is a very durable uh, shrinkage as well. So the progression-free survival will be longer than you expect from chemo. So about one CT scan longer, which is really what clinicians are looking for. So about two, two months longer. And it's followed by a very good and promising overall survival of more than one year, uh, which is about uh, two to three months, at least longer than you would expect from chemotherapy alone. So th this has generated lots of uh, enthusiasm. And uh, we are now, as I said, preparing for phase two slash three trial. We are in discussions with, with the FDA. Uh, the trial will be done only at, the, let's say, the leading centers in the US, uh, together with a group called PANCAN. So uh, we will get all, all the, let's say, KOLs in the world adopting the, this uh, molecule. And this is super important for us as a small uh, sw Swedish company to advance the program. <coughs> so, so then the second program, uh, in, as I said, the, the lead program is develop is an antibody against IL-1 RAP. But the second program is also recognized in IL-1 RAP, but in a different way. So we're binding a different epitope. Uh, so we're not only blocking the two forms of IL-1 here, but we're also blocking IL-33 and IL-36. Uh, and this program has been a little bit under the radar lately, but it, it is really getting lots of international attention now. And you, you may have noticed that uh, the data we presented in systemic sclerosis uh, got very good attention and was selected as an oral presentation at uh, the biggest rheumatology conference in the US just a few weeks ago. So w we noticed that there is an interest both in myocarditis and systemic sclerosis, and we are very, very focused on, on getting into the phase one clinical data or clinical uh, trial, uh, which will Obviously, since it's not cancer, it will be performed in healthy volunteers to start with, but then it will move into patients as we progress. So lo lots of things happening, and uh, we have a good news flow ahead of us. So uh, obviously, the pancreatic and lung cancer data I presented uh, was all from this summer, presented at the big ASCO conference. Uh, Lots of patients were still being treated at that point in time, lots of patients alive. So we expect to present those data in a more final format during the first half next year. And what's really exciting here is, is that we've taken biopsies from all these patients. And what m m most, uh, lots of, let's say, uh, various players in, in the field are looking for now is that, okay, you, you have really nice clinical data. 
So, but what's happening in the tumor, that's really the key question. That's what we hope to respond to as well during age one, now that we're analyzing uh, biopsies from m most of these patients, both before and for some during therapy. Uh, to, so, so let's see what's coming out. Uh, and we can also couple that to, to clinical outcome. Uh, and then the start of a phase two slash three trial. Uh, as, as soon as we're finished with the, the FDA discussions, we will uh, submit the protocol. And then we have lots of data from all these other trials, uh, which stopped recruitment uh, during Q3 and are now, let's say, maturing into H1. And the can program also, lots of things happening ahead of clinical data. So, so just to comment on, on our cash position, so we have about uh, 500 million Swedish on, on the bank, end of Q3. Uh, it will take us until at least mid 2024 uh, to, to, if we, let's say, go on with all, all these programs and it's really valuable to, to have that uh, security going forward. Uh, we have uh, strong owners backing us. So we have several Swedish institutions, pension funds and bank funds. We have some specialist funds f further down on our, our owner list. And clearly the support from them is going to be uh, of major importance going forward here. So to summarize very quickly, uh, we are company focusing on the opportunities around one molecular target, the IL-1 RAP. Uh, we have uh, treated more than 200 patients right now with cancer. We have strong clinical data both in lung cancer and pancreatic cancer. And we're going forward now to, towards registration trials. And uh, we also have a platform of new antibodies to fill the pipeline as uh, th things continue here. We have a good patent uh, situation with the lead program uh, having pat patent will last until 2035 unless we get prolonged market exclusivity and we can turn program until 2041 and we have a strong cash position. And thanks a lot. Happy to take questions. Thank you. <laughs> so let's start with a question from the audience over there. Uh, yes, thanks for a nice presentation. And um, obviously pancreatic cancer is uh, a super important topic. Uh, the overall survival is directly connected to uh, what stage you start the uh, treatment and you had around three months uh, prolonged su survival, which is you know significant. What stage did you uh, start with these patients? So it was uh, stage four patients, with, or 90% were stage four. We had uh, one or two stage three patients. And obviously, I mean, if you can go down to stage one and two, yeah, but do you have any anecdotal data on that? We have not uh, treated any patients in stage one and stage two, but obviously that's, that's su super important. important. Yeah. And uh, I think, for instance, if we can go into a new adjuvant setting, I think both our mechanism of action uh, as well as, let's say, the medical need would be yeah. enormous. Uh, so you really have a chance to cure patients. Right. You need a test for early di diagnosis. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know any company doing that? <laughs> <laughs> so any other questions? So I'm curious, could you describe the competitive landscape in which you exist? Absolutely. So uh, if we start with pancreatic cancer, it's, it's sad to say that the, the competition is not let's say, enormous, uh, very, I, I would rather see much more competition, but it's a very difficult disease. There has been lots of failures, and uh, I think the focus has been very much against other types of cancers. So in lung cancer, it's the completely opposite. There is so much competition, and uh, there is no way you can, let's say, have a strategy to get all patients. You really have to find your niches. And that's what we are doing much more, looking into how to use biomarkers and really select the, the right patients here. And as you explained, the survival rates for pancreatic cancer patients is very discouraging. Why is it such a difficult form of cancer? 
Is it possible to answer? Yeah, I think, I think we discussed that. It's diagnosed too late. Okay. So, so, so in most cases, it has, it has spread. You, you have, uh, let's say, your, your performance status has already been affected, so you cannot even cope with, uh, with the chemotherapies that are, are available. So uh, it's very tough. So, so there is a need for, for earlier diagnosis, but it's also, let's say, getting on treatment quickly and have treatments that uh, are safe as well, because if you have deteriorated, you, you, you cannot accept anything. I see. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.